The happiest moment I've ever had is cooking in my kitchen. Follow me today. We're gonna make mussel soup with brandy and saffron, inspired by my father, and yet turn around with my own inspiration. Lentil soup with sausages. An old Italian soup reinterpreted by me. Butternut squash soup with cannellini beans and ham. Oh, mamma mia. And today, let me show you why soup is good for the soul. Come for the recipes. Stay for the story. When the time came, finally, for me uh, to attempt the making of soup, I did it as a duty, not as a passion. Uh, the making of a soup, to me, was putting these vegetables that were boiled and then added and, and then in the broth and what is the flavor. And then I started to think, that is soup. If you start to think of it as a sauce, it get up at the bench all of its own. Mussel soup with brandy and saffron. I would like to tell you this is all me, I invented it. No. Actually, it's a derivation from an idea originally generated by my dad, and I think he would be very proud if he could see what I've done with this recipe today. Let me show you how to make it. In the oil, we're gonna start adding some nice garlic. You know, garlic in every one of my recipes is a present essence. A little bit of red pepper flakes. And you're gonna let the garlic brown for just a couple of moments. When you brown it, just toss it around, just like this. As soon as you see that the oil is starting to lick the garlic with a little bit of color, just a hint of it, then we go with the other ingredients. Celery. Carrots. All that I ask is when you do this at home that you chop them as fine as I do, because I want them to disappear into the soup. And a little bit of onions. This is known as a sofrito, a mirepoix. The next addition is something that none of you is accustomed to see. This is not typical Italian, but it's chopped bacon. And I like to add it like this because first it's gonna disappear into the base of the sauce as we have it right here. And second, it's going to bring out a flavor that is astonishing. I'm gonna lower the heat now to medium. I'm gonna let this cook for a few minutes. This, to me, is the most important part. Why? We want to create a base, a base that will give an infrastructure for this tower of flavor to be built upon. Uh, our sofrito with the garlic, with the bacon, is the base of what we want to do. But the true addition of what we are going to do is going to be our mussels. And here we go with our mussels. We are going to cook these mussels in the pan, and there are two purposes in what it is that we're doing, and you need to recognize them exactly for what they are. We want for the mussels to release the water which is inside. It's inside the shell, and you know that the mussels are ready as soon as they start opening up. If in your process of cooking you notice that the mussels do not open up, those mussels are no good. You gotta get rid of them. Uh, now, why is it that I'm putting the mussels now instead of putting it at the end? And there is a very important reason for this to happen. But before I tell you, let me do another small addition here. Brandy. Once you have the brandy, as you can see, the mussels are starting to open. And we're gonna do this until all the mussels do open. Now, let me continue with what I was teaching you. Why is it important that we add the mussels now versus at the end? is because I want for all the flavors that are from the ocean to imbue with all the flavors that we put from the earth. The bacon, uh, the celery, the onion, the garlic. Uh, at one point I'm gonna take the mussels out and I'm gonna reinsert them in the soup later. Why is this? Mussels, believe it or not, are fairly delicate. Once they open up, they have a range of, say, of about three to five minutes at most, where they move from perfectly done to overly cooked and almost chewy like rubber. You want to avoid that texture. So as soon as you see them opening, as I see some of them right now, you wanna start taking them out because you will use these mussels again in the soup later. And as you do it, make sure that you let the juice drop back into the base for the soup. As 
some will open quicker than others. Do not be in a rush. Let them go at it. There's always a couple of resilient rascals that just do not want to cooperate. So what do you do? Let me show you. A little bit of chicken stock. By the way, this will taste even more like the ocean if you were to use fish stock. It's not that easy to find fish stock at the supermarket, but if you're like me and you make it for yourself, it makes all of this taste even better. At this point, we had enough heat to know what stays with us and what goes away. So I don't like the fact that this guy's not opening the way that I want to. So away in exile. Now, let's add some potatoes. I cut this potato in a very small quarter inch dice. If you do the quartering of the potatoes ahead of time, I need to share with you something very important. What is that? Potatoes, if you cut them the day before, you put them in a container, you seal the container, they will turn brown. It's just the way it is. Once they're exposed to the air, after you peel them, the coat of protection is gone. They change color. So to maintain the whiteness of the potatoes as we've done in this particular case, what I want you guys to do is, if you do it the day before, to put it in a container, cover the potatoes with water, and then seal it. The potatoes will stay a lot better. Now, this is saffron. Watch. At this point, most of you will be surprised and say, what's a small piece of nothing going to do? It's going to infuse this with a flavor that's beyond believable. But also, it's going to give a base to the soup that is to the other side. And yellow is the color that saffron imparts to the food that is added to. Just finished with the chicken stock, and now gonna add a little cream. And we're gonna bring this to a boil, and then we're gonna let it simmer for a few moments. I think that my father would be proud. He would not approve of the brandy, though. He was old-fashioned when he came to this. He would only put wine. The biggest variation that he would do to it, he would actually use sparkling wine. Uh, now that we reached the boil, I want to bring it down to a simmer. And in the process of the simmer, I'm going to be adding the uh, mussels back in the soup. So the soup picks up the flavor all the way through. Not only you have all the flavors, which is the base that we created with the onion, the garlic, the celery, and even the bacon, but now there is this wonderful presence, both of the brandy and the essence of the ocean that come from the mussels. So let's bring these guys back into the soup. Once you add the mussels, you don't want to take any more than four or five minutes on a simmer. But what you want to do, you want to make sure that these mussels are reincorporating into the soup the flavor. Uh, we're going to give this uh, another couple of moments, and then we'll be ready. The soup is perfect. The soup is ready. And now we're ready to play. Father Vincenzo, I think, would be pretty proud of the developments that I have shown over the years. But this soup is something that I always think of him when I see it. There are certain moments in life that are splendid. One of them is to see the soup going straight into the muscle, just like this. I can smell it from here as I'm holding it. The soup has a little bit of the ocean, has a little bit of the land. But more than that, it has the presence of my dad. This is not a soup. This is a time machine. A time machine that gets me connected to my past. And in the past, I find my present. In this present, I find the variation of all these things that I learned from those who have taught me, specifically my dad in this case, Vincenzo, Vinny, as we used to call him. And the soup is a small accomplishment, not only because he taught it to me, but also because the way in which the soup is, the flavors that I can already perceive. And you do not need to be a master chef to be excellent as this, because what the soup does have, first and foremost, is soul soul in so many ways. In this, this is how you make mussel soup with saffron and brandy. And the most important thing is that you start with the sofrito. The sofrito, which is the three of it. Uh, carrots, onion, celery. This is the building block of the flavors that ultimately takes the soup, whatever you want to take it.
Then the addition of the wine, and it could be a regular dry wine like a Sauvignon Blanc or a Chardonnay, a softer side, but I'm also using Marsala, I'm using Sherry, and suddenly you start to see all the small openings on how the soup starts to pick up a direction. And while they may start the same way, they start to veer to the right, they start to veer to the left, and you bring in the potatoes as a thickener, and then you bring the broccoli as another alternative of flavor, and then you insert the cheese, and then you let them cook slowly. And that's the most important part. If you're in a rush when you make a soup, you're gonna win. Lentil soup with sausages, or as we call it in Sicily, zuppa di lenticchie con le salsicce. Don't worry about that. You will never be able to say it as fast as I did. Even I had difficulty. The soup is the kind of soup that just fills the day with joy. Why? There's sausage, there's lentils, there's tomatoes in it. It's perfect. Let me show you how to make it. Salsicce e lenticchie. Sausage and lentils are two ingredients that go wonderful together. More often than not, is used as a, an entree, where the uh, lentils are braised to the perfection that they're supposed to be braised at. The sausages are grilled, placed on top of the lentils, and brought over. Sometimes you can braise them together. And then I said to myself, Stellino, you're a genius. Okay, when I talk to myself, I always pay myself compliment. It's good for you. Especially when you're alone, you should do that often. And I said to myself, how about we turn sausages and lentils into a soup? You might ask yourself, Nick, what did you do that for? I, I just had barbecued some sausages for the party the night before, and a bunch of sausages left over. I say, how can I reuse the sausages and make it even better than they were before? And I came up with the soup. First, as always, we add the garlic, nice and thick, as I have it. In spite of the fact that I have a, little, a spicy sausage that I will use for this, I like to add a little bit of red pepper flakes. Now, we're going to wait until the oil gets nice and hot, and the garlic picks up some color. As the garlic starts to uh, pick up some color and starts to jump around in the hot oil, first thing that we add will be a little bit of onions, celery, and carrots. This very basic sofrito is at the base of everything that you see me do that has an aromatic finish to it. In this particular case, what you notice is that I am almost exaggerated by really shredding them down to the finest possible uh, size. Why do I do that? Is it extremely important? No, it isn't. But I would like for this part of the recipe to almost disappear, meaning that you will taste the flavor of it, you will taste the contribution of it, but you don't necessarily need to taste or bite into it. So remember, just because I do it this way doesn't mean that you cannot change. Now here we go with a little something that's gonna make you surprised, a little bit of brown sugar. Why? I bought into this concept of the yin and yang, and since much of the ingredients that we're going to add are going to be on the salty side, I find that just a pinch of brown sugar gives me the yin and yang reaction that I'm looking forward to. And now we go with the sausages. These are sausages that I basically barbecued last night, I uh, put them together, I cut them into cubes. If you don't have any leftover sausage, what, you cannot make the soup? Not at all! Look, if you don't have leftover sausage, don't feel as if you cannot do this. This is great to be done with leftover, but it's just as good to be done with fresh sausage. What kind of sausage can you use? As far as I'm concerned, there's only one kind of sausage, and the sausage is Italian sausage. Every other sausage, that's not a sausage. <laughs> No, that's not true. <laughs> I remind myself of one of these characters in the Hollywood movies. Every time they play an Italian who was so passionate about food that only recognizes the food that his mom made. Mamma mia. La Roma, ma che bellezza! And by the way, if you know any Italian songs, this is the time you want to sing them. Next thing we do, a little bit of deglazing. White wine. Seen this technique before. As I go with a white wine, let's keep stirring. We want the brown bits that are caught at the bottom of the pan to be reintroduced once again into the sauce. And you will notice how the white wine is darkening its color. These are all the juices that have been reincorporated into the base of the soup. As this is reducing, the next thing that we're going to do, we are going to go at it with our lentils. 
Now, lentils, I want you to think of them as little potatoes. They're not potatoes, of course. But what they do, they do two things. As they cook into the soup, and really, lentils cook fairly quick. Uh, within 30 to 40 minutes, you have a complete cooking uh, process for the lentils. But they also give substance, they give body to the soup. Now, talking about substance and body, beef stock. You could use chicken stock if you want to, but I think beef stock in this particular flow is much, much better. Let's stir this around. The last addition that we're gonna make is tomato sauce. You can do my tomato sauce, your tomato sauce, or you can just buy it at the store. We're going to bring this to a boil. So once you reach the boil, it's mandatory in my mind that you reduce it down to a simmer, and especially when working with lentils, let the simmer for a good 20 to 30 minutes. The soup was reduced to perfection. And now, now we're ready to plate it. Now, you will understand why I'm crazy about the soup. Soup is not just nutrition. Soup is, uh, in my opinion, something that feeds the soul, especially on those cold nights when you just want something to go your way. You know what, my life is no different than yours. Some days are great, and some days, <laughs> well, I could do without. The soup to me is splendid, but I wanna show you one last tidbit. What we have in here is a little bit of ricotta, and as you eat into the soup, it will spread as if it was cream. There's something beautiful about feeling alive, feeling that the food that you make is so beautiful, so gorgeous, it tastes so great. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make soup with lentils and sausage. And one of the things that I've learned is also to top the soup with a little bit of cheeses or crumbled bacon uh, or saute carrots or whatever comes to my mind. And suddenly the soup becomes to me this painting. Who knew I could paint? And look at this. Who knew I could actually make a soup? But there's something more important about the making of a soup that came to me later. It's the sense of comfort. It's the sense of this food that warms your soul, warms your heart. And as you can feel all this wonderful taste to it, it might be cold outside, maybe it's raining, and there's nothing better than a plate of soup. Butternut squash soup with cannellini beans and ham. This soup is the kind of soup that makes you feel great inside. As a matter of fact, next time you feel sad, this is the kind of soup you wanna eat. Come on, let me show you how to make it. In the pan, I've already placed uh, some uh, of my favorite olive oil. To this, we're going to add the garlic. As usual, I have the garlic nice and thick because I want these pieces of garlic, when you bite into them, to be totally cooked, brown, maybe a little bit soft on the inside and moving on across the papillas of your tongue as if it was a cream. And that's what I look out of it. The oil is starting to heat up the uh, garlic. Now, we're adding a little bit of red pepper flakes for a little bit of heat. The garlic, I started to cook, is gonna pick up a nice uh, a browning. While the garlic is sauteing in the pan, we add a little bit of onions. Together with the onions, we go with the second part of the triumvirate, the power of il soufrito, also known as mirepoix in French cooking. And this is celery, finely chopped celery that I added to it. And together with the celery, we go with the carrot, treated the same way. What does it mean to add layers of flavor? Flavor is an addition of ingredients that you let bloom into the base of the soup, and they open up, expanding even further the reach of flavors that they have. Now, with the sofrito, this is typical. It's something that you do for just about anything that's either a classical sauce or a classical soup. But here comes an interesting portion of it all now. We have, in my hand, some sage, fresh sage, which I have finally chopped. And I'm gonna add it right now, why? I'm gonna add some on top of the, of the soup at the end, but right now what I like to do is for this to kind of meld into these ingredients and to open up, to blossom its flavor into a whole new dimension. While this is cooking, I'm already calculating my next move, and here it comes. 
This is going to surprise you, but you've seen me use it often. It's a wonderful, stable base. This is chopped bacon, and you can use any kind of bacon, but chop is extremely important because you want for this bacon to melt into the base and melt ultimately into the soup. As the mirepoix is cooking and picking up all the flavors, it's time for us to build another layer of flavors, which is ham. Now, this ham is basic ham, and you do not see a package like this at the store. So what I've done, I've gone to the supermarket, they have a deli in my supermarket, and I ask for a single slice of ham, about the thickness of my finger, so you can tell them three quarter of an inch, an inch, and then I cut it in small dice. Why? First, I like the decoration that this gives, but also I like to add the ham at this point, cut into this way, so that it spreads the flavor that is typical of the ham, which combining now with the bacon and with the sofrito underneath is gonna open up another avenue of flavor. This is like a road that we're taking together. Now, we go with our main ingredient, butternut squash. What are you noticing about this butternut squash? Let me show you. Cut in small dice, why? I wanna do give this a very rustic look and I want for the butternut squash to cook fairly quickly. And also I like the way in which the butternut squash looks like on the spoon and the smaller pieces are more pleasing to me. Now we go with a splash of white wine. Once we get to the white wine, increase the heat just briefly and stir. We want to pick up the brown bits that are trapped at the bottom of the pan. In spite of the fact that this is a non-stick pan, you will see how as the wine reduces, it darkens up in color. Those are the juices that we inserted into this dish. Then we go with an addition of chicken stock. There is another addition that I'm about to execute that I would like to explain first. We are going to use uh, cannellini beans. I got a thing for cannellini, so I cannot tell you it's traditional, it's the way it should be. I love cannellini. And what we have done, we've taken the cannellini beans, putting it into a small food processor, and basically process them down to a mush, a cream. But what I want to do to this soup is, without articulating too many steps, is also to thicken it up. But keep this in mind. What we have done in this fashion, we have exposed the flesh of the beans. Why am I referring to beans as flesh? Not only they're protein, but they're gonna be picking up all the flavors that are in there and carrying them through, maintaining this wonderful thickness and creaminess to the soup, which is essential to what we do. You wanna add enough to create texture, but not so much that you make it so thick that it looks like a pudding. This that we're doing next is just a matter of getting it even creamier, and that's by adding some whipping cream, but not so much, just enough to cloud the soup. And we're gonna bring this to a boil, and then we're gonna let it simmer for a few moments. Now, this is the kind of soup that puts you in a good mood. First, you already know what it's gonna taste like by looking at it. Second, there's the addition now that's Parmesan cheese. You can add Pecorino if you want to, but I think I agree with my wife in this matter. Parmigiano Reggiano is a far better cheese, nicely grated. We're now gonna add it to the soup. But first, I wanna do one thing, turn off the heat altogether. Here we go. Watch the cheese melt into. To me, this is the best part of it all. And look already the consistency, nice and cheesy. Oh my gosh, this is so splendid. Every bite, it's a promise. Every bite is a bit of satisfaction. That's it. The soup is ready. It looks fantastic. And now, we're ready to plate it. The Artistry of Soup is a book that I will write one day. <laughs> Next to pasta is one of my favorite meals. And what I love about the fact that soup is more than just a meal. Soup is something that uh, comforts the soul. Uh, this particular soup is an evolvement of everything that I learned from my parents with a lot of personality of my own and truly is a small little masterpiece. And this is something that brings me back to my past, connects my present and puts a huge smile on my face. And this is how you make butternut squash soup with cannellini beans and ham. So soup can be an opener to a dinner, 
Soup can be a moment by yourself on a cold day inside the house, reheated in a small bowl. Soup can be something that you share with your loved one on a romantic night, antecedent to the food that will follow. Soup, soup is anything you want it to be. But the beautiful thing about soup is that if you paint it just right, soup, just like life, is beautiful. Okay, sure, I'll do it by word by word. Exactly. Absolutely. And big smile with the camera, and action. Ooh, uh, oh, and today we're gonna discuss, uh, 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 <laughs> did I do it? <laughs> <laughs> what is it again I'm talking about?